Thank you, Christian. So I'm going to make a presentation that is going to speak very much about the issues that Caris has raised and uh, the reason of the overlap is because the story is quite obvious. Uh, first of all, uh, this is uh, the picture of the team of Working Group 2 uh, in the last uh, author meeting in Bled, Slovenia. Um, this is a report that has uh, a similar composition, but perhaps larger than working group one, as uh, Jan explained earlier. And the process is very similar as well. Researchers are nominated. There is over 300 authors, uh, and in addition, around over 400 contributing authors to the report. The author team represents more or less around 73 countries of the world, and we also got thousands of comments that need to be answered one by one and that are going to be documented. We don't have an exact amount of the words in the summary for policymakers because all this is still in the making. I wanted to show to you and to sort of think a little bit over the outline and the structure of this report. Karen has already said the literature has changed quite substantively over the past 30 years and very much indeed in the past decade or so. The report not only takes a stock of this new literature, but also has a scope that is much wider than anything that the IPCC has done before. You will get two large volumes, one related to global and sectoral aspects, and another one that is regional. So what you get is a, an idea and a picture of those two different issues and the interactions between the regions and the sectors. You have there not only the impacts on natural systems, which was the main focus of the AR4 in 2007 and earlier, but the impacts on social systems and the interactions between the natural and the social systems with all the complexity, but also the importance, because that's the way the real world is, and that is where change happens. So for example, you have this cluster there of chapters on human settlements, industry, and infrastructure with a lot of important messages for society. Equally important, and Karen has already said that, you have this cluster of chapters on human health, well-being, and security, which quite dramatic substantive data. Adaptation has expanded. There was one chapter on adaptation in the Air 4. There is four chapters on adaptation, and it shows the breadth and the scope of the issues right there as well. And then we have these regional chapters that allows to see and to zoom in in different parts of the world the impacts and the challenges. What is extremely important to understand is that the basis and the literature assessed in this report addresses the challenges from multiple perspectives. In addition to the natural sciences, to the biophysical sciences, to earth system science, we see overlapping in this globe the critical role of the social sciences and the humanities. There has been a very sharp increase on the contributions of the sciences and interdisciplinary research across these worlds that enables us to see a very important detailed picture of the impacts, the opportunities, and the risk. What are the messages? This is obvious, and again, Karen has already said it. The report not only shows what may happen in the future, the report shows climate change is happening. The report shows that the impacts on both social and natural systems are substantive and they are widespread. They are widespread in terms of sectors and they are widespread in terms of regional areas of the planet. So I think that is one of the fundamental messages that is going to come uh, in uh, the report when it's released at the end of this month. Some issues to highlight, for example, is that the report shows in the chapters and the literature behind that the hydrological systems of the planet are being remade and that you can have already evidence of that. Cases of too much water, cases of too little water, with the consequences that this has not only for the water systems and the hydrology systems, but also for people. Water as a fundamental resource of which there is a lot of conflict about. Uh, the oceans is an issue that is very new and it has a lot of importance for this part of the world as well. Another very important area is agriculture and food security. 
Not only there is its own chapter on agriculture and food security, but the impacts related to food are addressed from multiple perspectives in multiple chapters. And there what we see is both the risk and the opportunities. What the report and the literature assess shows through work, for example, in collaboration with farmers, with participatory research, trying to see what people are already not only seeing the impacts, but what are people already doing with those impacts. So what the report will show is an enormous amount of creativity from farmers all over the world in trying to adapt and in trying to tap into the opportunities that changes in the climate may bring to them. <coughs> there is a dark side of AR5 Working Group 2, and perhaps better capture in this cluster of chapters on human health, well-being, and poverty and human security. The interaction of biophysical and social stressors, the climatic and non-climatic drivers put together, the existing inequalities, the poverty context, create and enhance vulnerabilities. And we see this repeatedly, and there has been a lot of literature really documenting this, not only in the Global South, but also creating new forms of poverty traps and likelihood of new groups of poor people emerging that right now we don't consider a risk. The risks are substantive. Health was an issue in the AR4, but the chapter on health this time draws from a much larger body of literature. Here you see the leading role, for example, that the World Health Organization has on climate and health, really documenting changes in vectors of diseases and many other impacts on health. The ability to work outdoors when the temperatures rise, for example. And then quite dramatic and important information about conflict and about war and migration and displacement. What the report shows is that there is existing literature and science that can inform decision making to manage impacts in infrastructure, in ecosystems, in society, economic activities and human security. So it is, in a sense, both the risk and the opportunities and the capacity to react to this. The report uses the term risk. There is no secret on this. But it's about identifying multiple risks and multiple opportunities through a very broad spectrum uh, of perspectives and uh, strategies. This, the, the structure of the report shows both the sectoral and the regional, but also the integration of those risks and the integration of the opportunities. One more time, the key message that this interaction of biophysical, climatic and non-climatic drivers, along with socioeconomic, political and cultural conditions, exposure and vulnerability, are the factors that create those risks. And therefore, we cannot see climate change as something separated from the rest of the world. The benefits of adaptation and mitigation also occur at different times. And we need to here see, and the report shows very clearly, why adaptation is needed, but at the same time, mitigation as well. And as we get into working group three, this is clear, along with patterns of global development. I want to conclude with two messages. One is the systems perspective. We tend to think, well, impacts happen somewhere, or if impacts are not happening to me, this is not relevant. Karen has already addressed that. I live in Bergen for many years, but I'm from Barcelona. I'm very sensitive to rain, so I was very conscious of the rain. But I also learned where does the rain come from, and obviously it's coming to Norway. This is a picture that shows the, con the, the consequences of Katrina's hurricane in 2005, leading to massive floods in Bergen. We had floods next to where I live with landslides. And this is a systemic perspective that is important to understand not only in the, I'm not able to put my animation. Anyway, this slide shows an animation of how the vapors of the world move around and shows the systemic perspective of the planet. But equally important is the globalized world that we live today, the political, the social, and the cultural systemic aspects 
the relationship between challenges to food security in Mozambique related to food prices and related to a crisis that has been caused by increased temperatures in Russia through a heat wave. This systemic perspective is of fundamental importance and it comes very clearly there. I ask permission to copy and paste some frequently asked questions. Uh, we did this in working group one and you will find there questions such as how could climate change interact with change in fish stocks and ocean acidification? Does climate change cause urban problems by driving migration from rural to urban areas? Will climate change cause war between countries? What opportunities are available to facilitate adaptation? The main challenges in detection and attribution? Will I still be able to live on the coast of Europe? And so on and so forth. So stay tuned because there is a lot more to that. Working group one, and Jan has said that, Finnish and the presentation Thomas Tucker gives all over the world on working group one is we have a choice. We have a choice between these two worlds that science shows us. So we have the knowledge that there is a present and there is a future, but we are still in that present. We are still in that moment where there is an opportunity a space for choice and decision making. And the science behind working group two shows the space for opportunities in the same way that it shows the ugly space of what is already happening with difficult uh, uh, scenarios. So we can have <coughs> like this Tanzanian uh, 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 farmer opportunities that can be tapped upon. And therefore, it is important to see that not everything is gloom day or catastrophe, but that we are still at the point where science can inform decision making in the right direction. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jasmine. <laughs> Karen, will you join us on stage? Um, we have time for a few questions before we proceed. No questions about... Yes. yes. Please. Since I, uh, since I follow uh, this uh, conference about uh, uh, climate, everybody talk about uh, global warming, but nobody, no one single body talk about uh, the effect of carbon dioxide when it stand, uh, when it stand on our uh, breathing, uh, on our breathing. Uh, I, ex I explain that. Uh, if I say, if I uh, look at the density of carbon dioxide, it's almost 1.8. Uh, uh, and for uh, oxygen, 1.3 one, uh, and 1.2 for nitrogen. That means the carbon dioxide is heavier gas. If we imagine this uh, gas sir, emitted... Sir, um, we need to be quick, so uh, uh, could you uh, just ask a question, yes, please? But yeah, but, uh, but the carbon dioxide is heavy gas, and over time it will isolate the oxygen and the nitrogen, and we will have problems to breathe for human beings. Nobody talk about that all over the... Okay, so that, that, that is perhaps a question more suited for our natural scientists. Yeah, but it's uh, also covered, I mean, the health issues are a major perhaps prominent help. issue in this report, and, yeah. and that work, the interaction between working group one knowledge and science. Heike, uh, det er for øvrig lov å stille spørsmål på norsk, og det er også Bergens. lov å introdusere seg på og på Bergen. Ja. <laughs> Da stiller jeg spørsmål på Bergen. Ja, det er jo bra. <laughs> Veldig enkelt spørsmål, og det er, ser dere, ser også rapporten, siden dere ser på fordelingseffekter, ser dere på sammenhengen mellom hvem det er som har forurenset, og hvem det er som merker endringene, og må betale prisen, den største prisen, for klimaendringene, sånn at du får en, håper vi si, den siden av fordelingseffekten også? Ja. We don't say so much in the report about the emissions and who's responsible for the emissions, no. but we start to look at you know, issues of um, 
the, you know, the questions of loss and damages, which don't come out in the literature that was assessed, but it kind of comes up in that the distributional um, issues on, especially in human security, poverty, and livelihoods, that um, again and again we see that it is the people who are contributing the least that are being the most effective, and questions of responsibility, then um, they're not taken up in the second working group report, but, um, but it's part of the larger narrative that we are addressing in the synthesis report, as well as, you know, like the equity issues and also the ethical issues. So it's something that is kind of an extracted as part of the whole story um, of working group, of the whole fifth assessment. If I may add to that, I think you are pointing to identified gaps in the literature. Rem uh, remember, the assessment assesses anything that is published up to a certain cutting point. And those are issues that are really coming very rapidly into the literature. And we, knew that we need a lot more work to really get to these answers from a scientific perspective. So there is emerging work on that, but it's on, on the making somehow. So that's the gaps, and that's mm -hmm. where we need to go. Well taken. Okay.